Hello and welcome to this continued series about HTML5 gaming. We're gonna look at the Pixie JS game engine for HTML5. My name's Sam, I'm a game dev with 25 years of game dev experience. The last decade or so has been exclusively within the Unity platform, doing mono behavior based projects as well as dots in the last couple of years. I'm really excited in this series to take a deeper look at HTML5 because I think it fills in a really interesting niche in the game dev industry. My career experience includes shipping titles for iOS, Android, PC, Steam, and more, but nothing for the browser since way back in the day when I used to do a lot of Flash game dev. But in the last 15 years or so, I've almost not touched the browser, and I'm learning fresh eyes here about how we can create things with JavaScript or TypeScript as another flavor uh, inside the browser using GPU accelerated gaming. All the videos, articles, repos, and tips, including the project template that I'll be exploring in this series, everything's available on this link. So if you enjoy this video and you wanna see even more stuff, this is the link to check out, I'll put the link below. So let's talk about Pixie JS as one of the HTML5 game engines you can choose. Pixie JS is the HTML5 creation engine. Create beautiful digital content with the fastest, most flexible 2D WebGL renderer. That's what their official website purports. And I think it's interesting in a lot of these game frameworks that they market themselves quite properly perhaps as being about digital content uh, interactive web experiences, not just games, but being able to bring video with interactivity and a lot more interesting types of installation experiences are done with this stack. Continuing with some of the official website material, the benefits here are that it is fast, flexible, and free. It's cool that it is currently and forever will be open source. So let's look together at some of the features here. So multi-platform support, Tinting and blending modes. It's cool for making different graphical looks and feels. Sprite sheet support. So a lot of JavaScript frameworks are 2D native. And one of the cores if you're making a 2D game is to deal with animated characters using what are called sprite sheets. So that's supported. Advanced text rendering. I'm new to the text rendering. I haven't been so impressed by the crispness of it, but I'm sure there's things that I could do to improve it. Uh, it also has a full scene graph. So the idea of having parent and child relationships with the graphics out there. So you could move the parent around and all the child objects come with it. Rendering auto detect. So I think that's a really cool thing that you can with Pixie.js be able to support WebGL and WebGPU. And to a certain respect, it knows how to detect, well, what does the local player's uh, system support and be able to toggle between them. Uh, the difference could be different visually, but certainly it would run more efficiently and be able to push a higher frame rate if the computer has uh, web GPU capabilities. Let's look some more here. So asset loading, an easy API, WebGL filters, which I think we touched on in the last page, uh, deploying it into apps. Yeah, that's an interesting part of any HTML5 framework is that you can think of these being a module that you could take more places. So within a given website, there could be a game embedded. Within a web-based app delivered through iOS or Android App Store, you could have a game as some or all of that experience. So you really get a cool uh, way to deploy these things. Uh, accessibility, multi-touch interactivity, cool. Now, one of the things I came across again, looking through the official website of Pixie.js, is that uh, v version eight is the latest version of the framework itself. And this is the version where WebGPU has come on board. So you can see some statistics here, given some of the demos, about how many objects you can move around and how efficiently in these different modes. And again, because of that auto renderer support we hit on, you can develop it once and it'll take the best advantage of the local hardware. And I'm still new, so I'm not sure of the details, but I think that there's somewhat of an arms race between each browser is unlocking more potential of the local machine, then each of these frameworks needs to update to what the latest and greatest browsers let you do. I've done all my development generally, and in these cases of HTML5 with the Chrome browser, and I always make sure I'm using the most recent version. So one of the cool things that you can look at is this idea of running a benchmark test or a mark test within the Pixie.js world. So you can open up this link 
run it on your machine. And in this case, it takes this 2D graphic of a bunny and it puts thousands and thousands of on the screen and shows you the frame rate. So here we're looking at a version of this. Now note that because I'm doing a screen recording, it's never going to capture the frame rate as well for two reasons. One, because the frames being rendered for, the, for this video are gonna reduce some of the fidelity. And also the screen recording software takes some of my CPU cycles. But that said, starting with a pretty powerful computer that I have, what we see here are great results, getting 180 to 215 frames per second with just two little bouncing objects. Let's see as I bring my mouse out and I expand and bring in uh, 22,000 of these bunnies, we're still pushing over 200 FPS. I'm gonna add some more. I like that the color slightly changes. We can't really distinguish these individual bunnies anymore. It's more of just the wow factor of seeing 36,000 bunnies still pushing graphics. Okay, here I am. I stopped at 65,000 bunnies. Again, all of them are still rendering. We only see the latest color because I guess the newer ones are being pushed closer to the camera. Here we have 170. Now, most game devs search for historically 30 frames per second as the ideal target. I think in the last two generations of console, 60 frames per second is more of the target. Now, of course, PC players like over 100 frames per second. But just using those as a couple benchmarks, let's see how many I can push and still have 60 frames per second. I haven't played with this before, so let's see. Okay, so here's more. We're still doing a lot. Now this isn't a demo that I created, but it's just that link following online. All right, I'm gonna stop there. We still have over 100 FPS and we're at 113,000 objects. Now I haven't looked at the source code here, but just thinking out loud, each of these are rendering to the screen. I think they might be a, a animated sprite, but I can't tell because it's moving so fast. It's like a blurry mess. So it's either one image per bunny or a series of images, perhaps with a little walk cycle or something. So that could consume some resources then there's some logic that is keeping them on the screen and having them look like they're bouncing. Now that might not be true physics or anything. It could just be checking their coordinates and having them re reverse direction here and there. But there's no doubt that there is per bunny calculations being done, including the rendering, which is probably the most expensive part. Now, because this is running on the GPU, we're able to hit over 100 FPS. So super impressive. And this is running on the latest version of Pixie.js. So that's it for this demo. We've taken a look at one of the options for how you can create some HTML5 gaming content, and that's with the Pixie.js library. There are tons of alternatives. Previously in this series, I covered a lot of the different engines, at least by name, and showed their logos, talked a little bit about the pros and cons, but over the course of the series, I wanna take a deeper look. And also, I'm gonna be doing some work within Pixie and showing you a project template and a game samples project that I've done with them, coding it from scratch. Thanks for checking out this video. Uh, you can contact me here if you have any questions, comments. Also put any comments below the video if you have any suggestions on how to get the greatest content for your browser using HTML5 Gaming. Thanks.